Hi, today we will go through some definitions of financial products and understand what are the available products in the market. This may be a bit dry but it's a necessary step that we need to take in order to later go deeper into each of the products and understand the maths, the valuation techniques behind each product. Okay, let's start with the easiest of all financial products which are plain vanilla equities and plain vanilla bonds. So what are these? Basically, let's imagine, um, let's imagine that you own a company and uh, you need money to go in, to venture in the new market or even to you have a new product in mind, you need money to, to open a new factory, to buy land and uh, start production in order to sell the product. So what can you do? There's basically two avenues available. Um, first, firstly, to raise the funds through the shares stock market and secondly to raise funds and borrow money you to the debt market what's the difference between these two markets okay so we have the share stock market on the left and the debts which comprise of loans and bonds on the right um, i mean for, for the purpose of this course we don't really distinguish the difference between loans and bonds for now okay so what's the difference between the shares market and debt market in terms of um, for the shares market, in terms of repayment, that we there's a regular dividend payment, which is basically dependent on whether the, the company has further use of funds that you accumulate over the years. So if the company doesn't have any any use of the fund and um, you don't have any better use, you is usually the company will return to the shareholders through the form in the form of dividend. As for the debts, there's no dividend concept and there's a there's a fixed and regular contractual in interest payment with uh end redemption at maturity. So um debts have a definite maturity, say five years, ten years, even as long as thirty years. So at the end of this agreed upon maturity, the debt has to be returned. So assume you, you borrow hundred million, at the end of this thirty years you have return 30 million to your to your debt holders um, which is very different from the stock market you don't have to return your shareholders any money it's assumed to be a perpetual sort of um, cash that the shareholders has given you if the shareholder doesn't want he can go and sell off the shares at the secondary market to another shareholders to another shareholder who wants to have a stake in your company okay um, and secondly Shares has shareholders have voting rights. Basically, they own the company, um, and that's not not the case for the debt holders. Sharehold in next in the event of um, distress, meaning that when when things go wrong and the company um, is in the midst of liquidation, shareholders are at the bottom of the packing order, which means that um whatever that is left and wherever that is given out to the bondholders to your creditors to your to the tax authorities to liquidators and so on and if there is anything left behind then the shareholders will get a share of whatever that is remaining so which is which is different from a bondholder um who are usually the first who claim who has the claims to the other um liquidated funds and of course shares are more volatile than bonds because because you know for bonds you are contra con contractually obligated to re to to give out your interest and your principal and maturity as opposed to shares um, the company doesn't need to really give out dividends if they choose not to and uh, of course there's no redemption and maturity okay so so in terms of riskiness um, shares are usually more risky than debts and in terms of risk management, um, shares are exposed to equity risk and um, debts are exposed to interest rate risk and credit risk. Okay, we may go through more of such risk management technique in a later lecture. Uh, so, so in general, we, we, we divide the financial markets into two categories. One, the cash products and the secondly, the derivatives products. What are these? Um, maybe let's start with cash products. Cash products are basically assets which you need to come up with 
uh, full amount of cash. So let's say you buy 1 million shares. You need to have 1 million at hand in order to buy the shares. Or let's say you go to a bond market and say you want to you buy 100 million of uh, IBM bond which matures in 2020, which gives up you know, 5% interest. So you need to have 100 million at hand in order to buy these products. So certainly, equities and debts are considered cash products. Another lesser, lesser or, or, or rather, um, not many people consider FX as a cash product, but I think, I think FX has really is very similar to a cash product in the sense that when you go into the spot market, um, let's say you want to exchange, you want to buy euro um, using dollars. So what you have, you have to give up hundred million dollars in order to get say 1.1 million, uh, 1, 0.9 million euros. So, so you're going to have a full amount, amount of cash in order to transact in the FX spot market. So I consider that as a cash product. Next, let's go on to derivatives. As the name suggests, derivatives is derived, is a derived product and uh, it's, they are basically derived from the cash products. So let's, there are there's several forms of common derivatives and first is swaps. Basically swaps, as its name suggests, you need to exchange, <coughs> exchange something for another thing. So it's a swap um, at regular interval of something for another thing. So let's say you can, in the equity market, you can swap equity performance for, for interest rate. Or let's say in the currency market, you can swap one currency for another currency uh, based on a certain rate. Or in the interest rates market, you can swap uh, a fix for a floating interest rate. Okay, so there's swaps. And um, there's forwards and futures. So forwards and futures are basically very similar. Forwards are traded in the OTC market between two parties who come together and then decide on, um, to agree on the on a contract to exchange something in the future. The futures market is also something that you need to exchange in the future except that it's being done off an exchange um, which is more in terms of credit risk is is of course is, is risk free in a way because of the margining. And uh, finally there's options which is certainly the most complex derivatives of them all because of this non-linear payoff um, so what's non-linear? Meaning, non-linear means that the, the the movement of the option valuation is not linearly dependent on the price, as com as which is different from say a swap or forward, whereby when the when the underlying equities or debt move x percent, we know for sure that the swap or forward will move you know y percent, but that's not the case for option. It's not. It's, it's dependent on the underlying, but there are other factors that are involved. So option markets, options are the most complex of them all. Um, we will go through in in a deeper, in, in a more in-depth manner at a later lecture. Okay, so that's, that's about some set all on the different products that are available. Um, the Those products that I just mentioned are really very vanilla. They are, as markets evolve, there's complex products are being introduced. Um, so the line between equities and debts, for example, it, it becomes blurrier, and uh, many products in the market do comprise elements of equities or debts. For example, convertible bonds, or preference shares, or um, yeah, or even uh, um, structured products like. Uh, Asset back securities where different tranches, you know, the top tranches can resemble a bond, the bottom tranche can resemble equity. So in the financial markets, all this have become much more complex than it was in the past. But the knowledge of the basic of each of these products are important in order to understand and move on to the more complex products. Alright, so that's all for, for now. Thanks.